So Ami. What's a up? lot a lot has happened like in the last couple weeks since the camping trip. So when I when I got to America and was approached about helping to produce and being one of the artists in the Kathy trip, I was really excited because that was the biggest Jewish music festival of the summer and it was a dream come true because it would mean that I would be on the bill with artists like Matusiahu and Zusha and Moshe Ben and guys that I really like admire and guys that I've grown up with musically like Kosha Dills and people like that. And I really was trying to figure out how I could be an artist on that bill in a way that wasn't going to trafe it up, honestly. Because I spent a lot of effort and time trying to produce a more kosher event and a more meaningful event in terms of traditional Jewish values. And I didn't want to be the driving force of doing something that could be seen as a stumbling block or less. So I didn't push my own personal music on the agenda the way I normally thought. I have an album come to class <laughs> that I've been hustling for like, I don't even want to say how many years. But like, the idea of this album meant the whole world to me because I saw a vision before I was from in a Brooklyn basement one of the first times I was really recording in a music studio. And the vision that I saw, I was it was on my birthday. And I was in Brooklyn at my friend Tony's studio and I was recording Boo Hoo because I was upset about something that happened in my life regarding an ex-boyfriend. And instead of just, you know, it was my birthday and I was mad at something he did on my last birthday. Instead of feeling sad about it, I just started writing a track. And then he called me while I was in the studio and he was like, hey, do you want to hang out? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> and I've been waiting for that phone call for so long for him to want me back. And instead I just focused on my music. And all of a sudden I got this vision while I was watching the Grammys. It was, um, it was Stevie Wonder. And Stevie Wonder was intro introducing like a category for singer-songwriters. And he brought out John Mayer, John Legend, and Corinne Ray Bailey. And he said, if you think singer-songwriters is a dead art form, take a look at these three artists and then they won a Grammy or something like that. But during that time, I saw this vision that was so clear to me. And that vision was like, when Chicago was king, Miss Shearer was gonna win a Grammy. But only if she brings the kids on stage. And she is a, a vessel or an instrument for God's vision of a woman. That's what I saw. And it just blew me away because like, what do you mean? I was like recording one of my first, it wasn't the first track on the album, but it was one of them in terms of like my production experience. I was far from thinking that I was a good Grammy winner or a very good singer. And in school, everybody just called me Shira, not Miss Shira. So I was like, cool. I was like the cool teacher that used hip hop in the classroom. But the, it was so strong, it got me sick. I actually was like sick to my stomach, like violently sick. And I called my friend Marty in Chicago. And I was like, yo, what's happening in Chicago? Why is Chicago gonna be the king? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, the only thing I know about Chicago is Oprah Winfrey. Like, is she doing something special? Like, should I hit her up? I, guess I heard maybe I know someone's connect from the knees or something. Like, he was like, you're crazy. I'm like, I know, but I think I could win a Grammy. I thought it was the stupidest thing. But I saw it so strongly. And then when Obama ran for the president, out of nowhere, this guy, I secretly wanted him to win because I thought that maybe if Chicago was king, I would win a Grammy. 
by then I was like really taking my music seriously, but I was still teaching. And um, I pursued that vision in terms of me being a singer for a long time. And in the creation of that album, I took on being an instrument for God as a vision of a Jewish woman. And part of that meant sneeze in terms of dress, which was very different from how I used to dress. And part of that meant maybe not singing in front of men. So I took a lot of time off while I was in Israel really developing and culturing myself and learning the traditional Jewish values from singing in front of men. And then I come back here to America and I'm faced with this challenge of like, you want to perform with the best Jewish artists in the world? Of course. And I don't want my narrative to be like, but I gave it all up because I'm from now, you know? I really don't like that narrative. Like a lot of girls that come into seminary, they talk about how they have these like great careers. But they gave it all up to be a mom because it's better. And that, I didn't want that to be my narrative, you know? Like I want it because I believed in God that I made it as a singer. I didn't see how that would contradict each other. And then I really started to change my feelings over the years to so that I should just use my voice to its fullest potential. If that meant speaking, giving it to Bar Torah, singing, talking to somebody. I just dobbined and I prayed that my voice should be used to its full potential and it shifted the way I used my voice, not that I used my voice. So over the time of the camping trip, I just started rapping and freestyling because I'm naturally good at that. And the environment itself lended to that because Ian and a lot of people, these are like hip hop guys. These are Jewish hip hop guys, you know? So like as crazy as it would seem in like Gaisha world or like regular world to have Jewish rappers in our world of like camping trip, it was just kind of cool to see a girl do it, but the fact that my intention in my head was that I was trying to be a little bit more sneeze because maybe not singing in front of men, maybe like freestyling wouldn't be so bad. I think that Hashem blessed me with that, with that direction. And He started opening doors for me because as I was trying to gather my band together for the camping trip, I reached out to Danny Flam, who was one of the horn players on my Come to Class album. And he couldn't come to the show, but when he heard me freestyle and he saw a couple of the videos that I put out, he approached me about a project that he was doing with some Grammy people. Danny won a Grammy for Kanye West's All of the Lights. That part. He, they, they worked on that. They collaborated on that. And I've taught Kanye West in school for many years to kids. I do the Diamonds of Sierra Leone thing because I have a friend of mine uh, that wrote that track with him, his cousin Demo. So Kanye's cousin Demo produced that track. And so just knowing that there were real people out there that do music that encourage you, encourage me to keep going. So I just didn't focus on the music for the whole time that I was living in Israel because I just didn't want it to trafe up the open mics that I was having for women that people would say like you sing in front of men so maybe I shouldn't come to your event. I feel like it's like more more minhag in Israel not to sing in front of men and maybe in Israel, in America maybe or in Tel Aviv where I, it's not, it's, as, it's a little more accepted or not, oh it's some of the more liberal orthodox, out of the box orthodox to me is kind of accepted. So I fell into something within the camping trip. It's like a framework to do freestyling. So Danny approached me about this project, which is a is being submitted for the Grammys for the 60th Grammy Awards, which is going to be in New York in in, in January. So this project that I'm working on now is already in consideration. With my name on it as a Mashira, as a producer, as a a lyricist and a singer that I'm doing freestyle that that project is being nominated and considered for a Grammy right now and that's like an overnight like she has to come in the blink of an eye like your dreams could come true in the blink of an eye in 10 years that I've been 
working for that so that when I got that opportunity of like, yo, we're looking for an artist to rap on that, it wasn't so crazy. And I just like freestyled on it and I recognized right away that it was Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata and I learned about Beethoven's life while I was teaching online to some, a girl named Angel in China. <laughs> So because I had learned about Beethoven's life when I was reading with her, I did reading comprehension questions with her because she's in high school. So when it was when I got the track and I listened to to the music, I just started freestyling about the pain that Beethoven must have been in as a young as a young boy, super talented, whose father was abusive and, and alcoholic and, and um just exploited his son's talent so that the family could survive, you know? And in my first take on freestyling with that, I just freestyled about that. And then when I listened to it again and I wanted to shape it, I really started thinking about Michael Jackson, actually. And about that this story could happen in any generation. There's plenty of kids out there that are talented as families or come from broken homes. And I started thinking about that bridge and being able to not even take up all that light for myself to be like, yo, listen to me, I got this track, but to expand the market to create music that just lays out a roadmap for other people to collaborate. And for me as a producer and somebody that's really looking at the market, I went to this, um, indie collaborative event tonight for people who are nominated for Grammys. And I really looked at all the people that were being nominated and, and they were all there trying to present to each other because they all had votes in the Grammys. And I was really looking at what the theme for the Grammys for this 60th year is gonna be. And really what I'm seeing are people are really upset at the current state of the union in America or the current state of disunion, I should say, in America. And a majority of the artists were using their platform to talk about personal stories of immigration to America and unity and love and support for Texas. And to be honest, real great disappointment in Donald Trump and his lack of addressing the neo-Nazis in Charlottesville and as a Jewish person who is a, is a product of survival from the Nazis, I mean, my Zadie came to America as an immigrant when he was the same age that my students are now. My students in America are like 17. And when my Zadie came to America, he didn't have anybody. And he survived, you know? And um, the dream of the Jewish people was to then, to then make it really home to Israel. And that's something that I've done is to, to return to Israel. And I sort of abandoned my dream, my personal vision for myself as a, as a Grammy award-winning artist because I really built a connection to Israel and wanted to learn what it meant to, to keep my promise to God to be a vision of what it meant to be a Jewish woman. And that did not include being sexy and saying in front of men, dressed in scantily clad clothes the way most girls are. 